uh, one thing I want to mention uh, before even I start is we'll have an extra class on Saturday because I want to finish your this topic within this week only. Okay, so um, I I want to keep an extra class on Saturday. I do understand it's your weekend, but uh, please manage that. Okay, all right. So uh, starting with drugs action on the thyroid. And where is thyroid? If you move your hand to uh, like b beside your uh, on the sideways of your neck, okay. And if you do like that, okay. So this here, okay, is your thyroid gland. All right. Uh, like you can see here, okay. All right. So <clears throat> what does thyroid gland do? Thyroid gland actually produces thyroid hormone. Can anybody tell me? From where thyroid gland is getting messages to get, uh, you know, um, from where exactly they're stimulated? What chemical is released from where to stimulate the thyroid gland? Hypothalamus, okay. What exactly uh, hormone? thyrotropin releasing hormone okay and then from hypothalamus it goes to pituitary very good pituitary gland releases tsh which is the thyroid stimulating hormone okay very good and now we will be talking about uh, the thyroid gland which is finally uh, stimulated and now it will produce the thyroid gland uh, thyroid hormone okay uh we have two conditions which we will study today because we are not doing physiology we, we are doing pharmacology here so we will have two conditions here today first one is hyperthyroidism in which this gland becomes uh not active at all okay and the other one is hyper uh, hyper uh thyroidism in which the gland is over stimulated okay so over secretions are there. So both of the cases we'll study and uh, we'll study that in what case, what drug we'll give. All right. So uh, this is the map of the lesson today. So first of all, we'll discuss about the synthesis of natural thyroid hormone. Then we'll discuss the thyroid hormone preparation, which means that how exactly we are stimulating uh, the thyroid gland to produce more of the thyroid hormone and uh, obviously how to uh, take in the medications that will actually mimic the effect of thyroid gland okay and then we will study about the anti-thyroid uh, drug in which uh, the hyper secretion okay over secretion from the thyroid gland is inhibited uh, no all right so first of all let's talk about the synthesis of natural thyroid hormone before we discuss this slide let's go to this slide first of all okay all right so what is happening you see iodine okay this iron is getting inside the thyroid follicular cell okay through a stem porter now stem porter is the one by which two ions okay they are entering together okay so iodine ion is entering along with the sodium ion so iodine ion then enters uh here within the thyroid gland okay and along with that if you look here there is nucleus and then there is endoplasmic reticulum now if you remember the function of endoplasmic reticulum is to produce proteins right so the proteins okay will be released here all right and then along with iodine the conjugation will be there okay and then endocytosis will happen now if i if i uh, ask you to look here okay what kind of protein is this this is actually tyrosine okay so we are using tyrosine and we are using iodine okay so tyrosine and iodine molecules okay they get attached together okay and then eventually the thyroid hormone is released if you look here uh, before 
what is being released i have two different types of compounds here right first one is thyroxine and the other one is triiodothyronine right when i look at the triiodothyronine i spot one two three three purples here right and when i spot here okay so that is one two three four so this means this is t4 and this is t3 okay what are they how do they act we'll talk about it okay all right so natural thyroid hormones are formed by the iodination of tyrosine residues on the glycoprotein thyroglobulin right so if if i look at this slide this first slide again it is in just two lines a lot whole of the process is actually described isn't it that tyrosine okay is getting iodinated um tyrosine residues on the glycoprotein which is thyroglobulin let's go back here so if you look here this is thyroglobulin okay and uh, on top of it that we have uh, tyrosine okay and then the tyrosine actually gets iodinated right everybody okay so a tyrosine re residue may be iodinated at one that is mono iodotyrosine or two that is diiodotyrosine positions all right let's go back so you see here okay the, if you if you look here all right so on the one iodine is attached here look look over here for convenience okay here all right so here only one iodine is attached okay and here on this molecule two iodines are attached okay so this is mit monoidothyron uh, and this is did all right okay so we have monoidotyrosine and diidotyrosine okay so two idotyrosines are then coupled to synthesize triiodothyronine that is t3 formed from one from one from mit and did okay and thyroxine which is t4 it is formed from two dit okay so t4 synthesis exceeds t3 synthesis fivefold all right it means that t4 is produced more in the body 80 percent of circulating t3 is derived from deiodination of t4 all right wait <coughs> sorry okay so biosynthesis is stimulated by tsh which acts by a membrane associated g protein coupled receptor that increases follicular cell tmp all right now we'll discuss about the thyroid hormone preparation so a thyroid hormone preparation includes the following we have levothyroxine sodium a synthetic sodium salt of t4 that maintains normal t4 and t3 level then we have uh, lyothyronine sodium a synthetic sodium salt of t3 then we have lyotrix a force to one mixture of the above t4 and t3 preparations uh, then we have thyroid usp which is prepared from the dried and deep padded animal thyroid gland and mixture contains a, mi a mixture of uh, t4 t3 mit and dit uh, i must tell you this is used like very rarely and this is used when uh, it is needed much otherwise we usually give these formulations okay all right so how do they work okay so before talking about mechanism of action let's discuss this thing okay all right what is happening t3 is getting inside okay from the blood plasma into the cell all right T4 is getting inside. What they are doing? They are crossing the 
cell membrane they are entering into the nucleus okay uh, after passing through even the nuclear membrane okay through the nuclear pore they are entering and they are entering into the nucleus all right now within the nucleoplasm there is thyroid hormone receptor okay so this t3 and t4 would get attached here and a specific gene all right thyroid response element okay this gene would be transcripted so as a result a messenger rna will be produced and this messenger rna i tell you what uh wait a minute okay let's say there is a ribosome all right on the uh rough endoplasmic reticulum okay or maybe uh, in the cytosol okay so now it will go through the ribosome okay and as a result a chain of amino acids would start to uh, combine together forming the peptide bonds and as a result polypeptide chains and proteins are produced okay everybody okay wait let me erase it all right like i said that uh polypeptide chains would be produced proteins would be produced okay so overall if you look here that it will produce the enzymes all right and it will produce the myosin heavy chain and the receptors all right so these are the proteins which will be produced in response to uh, the uh, the transcription of the gene all right i must tell you the main function of thyroid gland is to enhance the metabolism wait this one is trna no 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 this one is mrna trnas are there in the cytoplasm okay trnas gather up the amino acids they bring it towards the ribosome okay and then the amino acids get start to attach uh, in a series am i clear to you i'm i'm not fatma okay so this one is mrna mrna is the complementary copy of one of the strands of the dna okay wait all right getting back here so thyroid hormones interact with specific nuclear receptor protein located in the nucleus of target cell and alter the synthesis rate of a specific rna leading to increased production of a specific proteins like i just said uh including uh sodium potassium atpase uh increase atp hydrolysis and oxygen consumption contribute to the effect of thyroid hormone on basal metabolic rate and thermogenesis see your thyroid gland okay it's controlling the basal metabolic rate and also the thermogenesis so heat is also being produced okay so t3 is the most important ligand for the thyroid receptor t4 binds very weakly all right so in the start in the previous slide we read that t4 was more in the quantity however t3 binds well all right okay so thyroid hormone affect virtually all all tissues all right why because in all of the tissues uh metabolism rate would be there energy would be created that is why okay all right coming up to the pharmacological properties more than 99% of circulating t4 is bound to plasma proteins only 5 to 10% of t3 is protein bound most t3 and t4 are bound to uh tbg that is thyroid uh, binding globulin all right then we have uh, t4 also binds to prealbumin t prealbumin okay and both t4 and t3 bind weakly to albumin it's a protein in the blood okay then we have t3 has approximately half life of 1 day and t4 has a half life of 5 to 7 days uh levothyroxine sodium and lyothyronine sodium can be administered orally or iv oral absorption rates range from 30 to 65% levothyroxine sodium is preferred to lyothyronine because it has better absorption has a longer half life 
and produces a favorable T4 to T3 ratio. Uh, then we'll talk about the metabolism that T3 and T4 are inactivated by deiodination. When I say deiodination, as the name suggests, that the iodine will be taken off from the tyrosine molecule and it will be deactivated, okay? All right, so conjugation of T3 and T4 with glucuronic acid or sulfates occur in the liver and these metabolites are secreted in the bile. Uh, some enterohepatic circulation of the metabolites occur. 20 to 40% of T4 is eliminated in the feces. I want you all to tell me what is enterohepatic circulation. I told you all in the previous slide as well. Now I want you to tell me. Amna, can you please tell me that on what half-life depends on, okay? And rest of you have to tell me what is entire hepatic circulation. Binding to plasma protein. No, no, no. When it is distributed, then it is binded to plasma protein. I, I'm asking you, why do you think so? Our drug has a half-life. What do you mean by half-life? Ummeh Habiba, concentration. What do you mean by concentration, Bita? When drug enters liver, and is eliminated through feces and it is called enterohepatic? No, it is not called that. Try to think enterohepatic. Two words. Enterohepatic. Okay, let me give you a hint. Um... Here we are studying that it's being conjugated, okay? And then the metabolites are secreted in the bile. Am I clear now? All right, since I'm not getting any, uh, okay, I got a response. Circulation occur from liver to bile. Liver to bile? Circulation? What kind of circulation you're talking about, Anam? Hmm? Drug? No. Wait a minute. Let me pause the recording and unmute you. Okay? Wait. All right. All right. Okay, beta. Look here. Interhepatic circulation means that uh, from the intestine, okay, it is going back to the liver and being reused, okay. So, some uh, interhepatic circulation of the metabolites occur. So, 20% to 40% of T4 is eliminated in the feces, okay. So, what, what exactly is the way by which uh, blood goes from the intestine to the liver? That is hepatic portal vein, right? So, the blood goes there, okay. And then the metabolites, uh, you see here, if you see here, so conjugation of T3 and T4 occur, okay? And uh, glucuronic acid and sulfate uh, have, uh, 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 like with them, okay, conjugation occur, all right, in the liver. And then the metabolites are then secreted in the bile, okay? And uh, finally, we'll see that 20% to 40% of the T4 will be eliminated through the feces, right? All right. Now talking about the actions. So thyroid hormones are essential for normal physical and mental development of the fetus. Linear growth of the long bones, growth of brain, 
and normal myelination depend on thyroid hormone. Hypothyroidism in infants uh, lead to cretinism, uh, uh, myxedema, which is hypothyroidism, with physical and mental retardation. So how exactly babies look like with cretinism is this, okay? So uh, you can, I, I have jotted down the symptoms here that hypothyroidism develop in infancy of childhood. So they'll have short stature. They will have um, mental retardation, coarse facial uh, features, protruding tongue and umbilical hernia. So these symptoms will be present in these babies. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> So these agents increase the, uh, like I said before, okay, they increase the metabolic rate and blood sugar levels. They also increase the synthesis of fatty acids and decrease uh, plasma, cholesterol, and triglyceride level. Okay, I want you all to take some time and pictureize, visualize, imagine a person who would uh, have hyperthyroidism. Okay, how exactly the person would look like? Would that person look a uh, fat person or a lean person g i'm waiting for your answer in the chat box lean okay it means that if i want to lose weight i can start taking um, drugs that will in, uh, enhance my metabolism is it should i start taking because the fifa just said to me that the person would become lean so that's the target, isn't it? Gia Fifa. Neha says become fat. Just imagine Neha, the person, Neha beta, just imagine uh, the person, wait a minute. What is happening to the person, okay? Uh, their basal metabolic rate is increased, okay? Their blood sugar levels are being elevated, all right? Uh, they also have increased synthesis of fatty acids and decrease in blood, plasma cholesterol and triglyceride level. Hmm? All right. So he will become lean because, uh, because what? Wait a minute. Because more metabolism will occur. I have seen two patients who are skinny very good very good i've seen some good discussion going on in the chat box okay so yes you guys are so true that hypothyroidism leads to uh looking clumsy okay uh, and uh, when we have hypothyroidism okay because of course a lot of energy would be produced in the body so the person would look hyperactive okay i have inserted uh, the pictures here in the site so you would see okay very good shafkat are very nice okay shagufta sorry i'm so sorry i read your name wrong uh yes so uh wait a minute Kaha gay? okay person lost weight and maybe irregular heartbeat so this is the answer of shagufta which is so true that uh some ladies they actually start to take uh thyroid uh you know uh thyroid medication or uh and they say that maybe they are fat because they have hyperthyroidism without doing any tests. And when they do so, they have high risk to develop uh, arrhythmias. All right. So they should not do that. Okay. All right. So thyroid hormones increase the heart rate and peripheral resistance like we just talked. So these agents inhibit TRH and TSH release from the hypothalamus pituitary respectively. High thyroid hormones enter, um, sorry, exert maintenance effect on the CNS, reproductive tract, GIT, and masculator. Uh, then we have the therapeutic uses. So obviously, it will be used to treat uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary hypothyroidism caused by Hashimoto. It's an autoimmune disease, uh, mixed edema, and simple goiter, which is thyroid gland enlargement without hyperthyroidism okay uh okay yeah so a person with hypothyroidism would actually look like this okay so the person would have 
here which are dry coarse as far as okay the lateral eyebrows would be really thin okay and under the eye all right there there would be a baggy uh baggy under eye okay so edema would be there and puffy dull face with dry skin okay um okay and dull is not just that the person would make face like this okay the person would actually look really dull all right and this is the diagram which i uh not diagram sorry picture which i have attached of the person who had hashimoto disease okay wait a minute here or okay it's an autoimmune disease so goiter the the gland was really big okay all right so uh the this can be used the synthetic thyroid thyroid hormones can be used following surgical ablation of the thyroid gland TSH dependent carcinomas of the thyroid may be treated uh, with thyroid hormones if other therapies are not feasible. Okay. Then we have adverse effects. So thyroid hormones produce iatrogenic hyperthyroidism, nervousness, anxiety, and headache. So this iatrogenic hyperthyroidism means that this is created because of the medicines which a person had taken. Uh, so these agents induce arrhythmias, angina, and infarction in patients with underlying cardiovascular disease. So thyroid hormones should be cautiously used in the elderly. All right. Now let's talk about the anti-thyroid drugs, which is uh, all of these. Let's talk very quickly because I have very less time left. So first one, we have anion inhibitors of thyroid function. And we have these. So these agents are monovalent anions with a hydrated radius similar in size to that of iodine. Iodide. So iodine inhibitors competitively inhibit transport of iodide by thyroid gland. These agents are limited by severe toxicities, including fa fatal aplastic anemia to occasional diagnostic use for thyroid function. So a plastic anemia is that one in which the blood is not produced sufficiently by the body okay and it, this can be used all right uh, to test to diagnose the thyroid function okay if thyroid gland is actually working properly or not um, then we have thiomites so they include uh, propyl thioracyl and uh, metamazole so methamazole is approximately 10 times more potent than PTU. Thiamides interfere with the organification and the coupling of iodine by inhibiting with peroxidase enzyme. So PTU inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3. And remember T3 is more potent. Okay. All right. So T4 can be used during pregnancy. Uh, Thiamazole, sorry, methimazole is teratogenic and cannot be used, okay? So teratogenic uh, is actually the condition in which the babies, they develop uh, physical uh, and psychological abnormalities, okay? So, wait a minute. Uh, thiamides remain active after oral administration because uh, firstly, to 80 percent is absorbed so these agents have half-life of approximately one to two hours they're concentrated in the thyroid gland and inhibit thyroid hormone biosynthesis for 6 to 24 hours they do not affect t3 t4 already within the thyroid attenuating uh youth thyroid status when initiating therapy may take two to four months Thyromides are eliminated in the urine as glucuronides. So you see, this is the condition which is hyperthyroidism, okay, in which the eyes are bulged out, okay, eyelids are retracted, and the redness is there, all right? Uh, okay, and I tell you what, the people who have hyperthyroidism, they, uh, even when it's so cold, they feel that uh, they sweat and they feel that it's really hot okay so okay let's discuss that hypo uh, thiomides treat hyperthyroidism from a variety of causes including the graves disease and toxic goiter 
Uh, thiamide are also used to control hyperthyroidism prior to thyroid surgery. So these agents commonly cause rashes, headache, or nausea. They may also include leukopenia or agranulocytosis. Then we have iodide. In high intracellular concentration, iodide inhibits several steps in thyroid hormone biosynthesis, including iodide transport uh, and organification. So iodide inhibits the release of thyroid hormone. Iodide is usually combined with thioamide. It is rarely used as a sole therapy. This agent is used before thyroid surgery, causing firming of thyroid tissues and decreasing thyroid vascularity and the treatment of sporotrichosis. So this sporotrichosis is this one, okay, and it's a fungal disease, all right? Okay, so iodide may cause angioedema, rash, a metallic taste on administration and hypersensitivity reactions. Then we have very famous radioactive iodine. So it emits beta particles and x-rays and has a radioactive half-life of approximately eight days. It is transported and concentrated in the thyroid like the non-radioactive isotope. High energy radio iodine emissions are toxic to follicular cells. It treats hyperthyroidism via non-surgical ablation of the thyroid gland or reduction of hyperthyroid, uh, hyperactive thyroid gland without damage to the surrounding tissues. So this agent is useful in low doses in the treatment, in the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism and goiter. It may be used to assess thyroid responsiveness. Overdosage of this agent commonly causes hypothyroidism. Thank you, everybody. So on time. Allah Hafiz, everybody. I'm, uh, the meeting would stop really soon. Okay, Allah Hafiz.